Hey, good morning. <laughs> I'm um, in the Ikea parking garage. So I don't know if my signal's going to work at all. We'll see. Um, it looked like it had 4G signal, but it took a while to get started. So let's see if I can get out of this coat. But it looks like it's not looks like it's not going anywhere. I don't see anything happening here. <sighs> hey Susan. It looks like my signal's really, really slow. I don't see um, anything at all happening here. Hey, is it working? Can you see me and hear me? Okay, well, let's chat. <laughs> it took forever to, um, like, start rolling or whatever Periscope does. So, um, I'm at the Ikea store waiting for my daughter and I'm in the parking garage, so my signal may be pretty bad. Yeah, car today. Car view today while I'm sitting in Ikea. Um, I think she thought they opened at 9.30, so I left um, LJ really early, and now I'm here too early. But, we can do our um, we can do our reading while we're waiting. Today's our Tao Te Ching day. Okay. Let's just go ahead and start. Um, how are you doing today, Susan? Let's start with this book. And people can catch the replay. Uh, every time Periscope does an upgrade, things get weird. And probably people are not getting their notifications, I suspect. Oh, good. So today... Yeah. Oh. Hey, Michelle. My signal looks slow. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. If not, I guess the replay will probably work. Hey, Linda. There comes everybody. I'm in the Ikea parking garage. <laughs> I'm waiting for Morgan to get here. Hey, Linda. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I'm here too early. Morgan thought it opened at 9.30. It doesn't open till 10. So I'm just waiting for her to get here. And I told her I'm going to go ahead and scope while I'm waiting. I like their stuff. I don't really like the store. It's so big. But we're here first thing in the morning on a weekday. So, me? May, probably just some storage stuff for our closet. She needs to buy tons of storage stuff. The, I'm in the one in downtown Atlanta. It's huge. It's huge. So... I was looking at this chapter while I was waiting for the signal to get going, and it speaks to me uh, to addiction. Like when we stop engaging in our storytelling, it's a little like we're giving up an addiction because it's kind of a, we're giving up the drama, we're giving up the excitement of gossip, we're giving up the binging on negativity. It's kind of like going on a diet, and it can feel kind of boring and really, really quiet in the beginning. And today's chap or today's verse really speaks to that. Maybe you can screenshot it. So it says humane power, number 35. Yeah, so at first you're like, gosh, it's so quiet. I don't even know what to do with myself. Hold fast. To the great thought, and all the world will come to you, harmless, peaceable, serene. Walking around, we stop for music, for food, but if you taste the way, the Tao, it's flat, insipid. It looks like nothing much, it sounds like nothing much, and yet you can't get enough of it. Hi, Nina. We were just talking about how um, today's chapter is especially seems to speak to addiction and how quiet things can be when you first give up addictive engagement with ego constructs in the world. Um, 
Yeah. And it's interesting. The longer periods of time I'm able to spend connected, the more I'm developing a craving for that state over too much Facebook, too much Netflix, too much time chattering about nothing, um, that kind of stuff. So let me read that one more time. Hold fast to the great thought and all the world will come to you harmless, peaceable, and serene. Yeah, you get to meet the people who are where you've wanted to be all along. And you obviously must be there if you're connected to each other. Walking around, we stop for music, for food, but if you taste the way, it's flat, insipid. It looks like nothing much. It sounds like nothing much. And yet you can't get enough of it. And it's true. The peacefulness at first is startling. The quiet at first is like, what is this? What is this quiet? <laughs> and then after a while, it's like, wow, uh, I really like that quiet in my head. And I really hear my stories so much louder than before, which is good because I want to know what's going on in there. Yeah, <laughs> you can explain it in one sentence. Right, the more you meditate, the more you want to do it. Yeah, the more I spend time connected to source, the more I want to be connected to source and the less appeal the outside stuff has. It's losing its appeal. Um, when you give up sugar after a while, Sugar really does lose its appeal, believe it or not. <laughs> it really does get to where when you taste it, it tastes so bitter. Sugar actually has a bitter aftertaste after you've been away from it for a long time. And I mean like months. Then when you taste like cake or frosting or candy or something, it has a yucky aftertaste. Fruits and vegetables taste actually sweeter than they did before. And that's what this feels like. Like life is tasting sweeter than the artificial, um, refined life I was experiencing prior to this. No, you don't want to believe me. <laughs> Say it isn't so. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, say it's not true. Let me see here. We're on 35. I lost my place in this little book. Sugar's rough. Yep. Yeah, Susan. It's um interesting. So in this book, our translation says of the same verse, she who is centered in the Tao can go where she wish wishes without danger. She perceives the universal harmony even amid great pain. Because she has found peace in her heart. <laughs> Music or the smell of good cooking may make people stop and enjoy, but words that point to the Tao seem monotonous and without flavor. When you look for it, there's nothing to see. When you listen for it, there is nothing to hear. But when you use it, it is inexhaustible. So compared to the glitter and the glitz of um, everyday life, mm, let's say everyday average life that's marketed to us, it this way appears so... I mean, that's why people don't stick with it, right? Because it doesn't look like anything. It's so easily overlooked. It's so easily dismissed as being too simple or too easy or whatever office work. Yeah. But that's the truth of it, right? It's the quiet little soft voice in our head that carries the most truth or boring. Yeah. Yeah. It appears boring. Right. I agree, Roseanne. I, I feel that way too. To have to go back into a cubicle now would be um, soul crushing in, in a way like it never was before. The quiet, soft voice is so easy to dismiss. And that's where all the truth is. 
And it's really hard to tell people that. Um, it's really hard. I need to do um, Thursday. I'll be doing just a short little um, scope. Were you in my mind's eye? Just a short little scope for the Young Living group that I'm a part of called the Lemon Droppers to talk to them real briefly about um, the negative self-talk in our head. And it's like I've been saying this stuff for a long time. And it's people, a lot, some people just want another book. Well, tell me another book to read. Well, give me another course I can take. Uh, give me something else to learn. And it's like, use what you've already learned. You've, you know, all you have to do is stop and start listening to your breath. You don't need another book. You don't need another method. You don't need another set of instructions. You just need to sit down and breathe and watch your breathing and listen to what happens because magical things start happening and you don't see them when you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off or with your face stuck in your phone all day and I say that with the most affection possible because my face is often stuck in my phone I want my phone all your stories surfaced yesterday good lord Stop. Collaborate and listen. I see here with a brand new invention. Something grabs a hold of me tightly. Yeah. <laughs> Daily and nightly. <laughs> the feeling and tension didn't help. Sometimes if your stories are super loud, <laughs> you've got to stop and process some negativity. And take a look at those stories and write them down on paper. If your stories are like up in your face... Start writing that down on paper and let all the negativity come out. Say all the mean, petty, garbagey things that you would never say to another living human being. <laughs> um, and get it, get it out on paper and then see what happens, Susan. When it's all rushing out, let it rush out on paper. Get that shit out. It is so freeing, but you really have to get that stuff out. It is helpful. It really is. Yeah, you betcha. That's what we're here for. So chapter 35 in our Byron Katie book. Stop the hate. That's hard. Stopping the judgment is harder. But my God, it's freeing. It is so freeing to stop labeling. Oh, God. Roseanne, I foresee a day where they will not even bother you one bit. Post-it note, Susan. Post-it note the heck out of your living and workspace. Write yourself little notes. Yeah, because you don't remember. Because your brain's in survival mode. So use post-it notes. So, and the need to be right. It's the worst. The worst. Okay. So, Miss Katie says... You don't have to think in order to be okay. We're not doing the thinking we're being thought. Well, and the good thing, Susan, too, is we're all here together every 24 hours. So if you forget, within 24 hours, you're going to remember. Or if you pop on Periscope, somebody's going to be scoping something that will help you remember. Oh, I love post-it notes, too. There's nothing to know, so you don't have to pretend that you know anything. It is the beautiful, beautiful, beauty, beauty thing. There's nothing you can do to live and nothing you can do to die. If you're centered in reality, you can go where you want without danger. It's not an act of courage. There's no risk involved because danger happens only in the future, and the future can never come. Nothing is ultimately real, so when people talk about violence, I notice the violence that they're using right now against reality. In the description of violence is violence. Why would you be afraid of reality? Reality is benign for those who can see clearly. Once, not long ago, after I woke up in 1986, a Christian minister said, You're too open. 
You don't have any boundaries or resistance, and that's dangerous. Evil entities could walk in and take you over because all your doors are open and they could do you and the rest of us terrible harm. I was like a baby in those days. I almost always believed people. But when this man spoke about evil, I knew that what he was saying was not possible. I believed him when he said there were such things as entities because at that point I had no reason not to. But to me, evil meant confused. Hey, Catherine. And I knew that everything is welcome here. Everything. This body isn't mine. Anything that needs to enter is welcome. I delight in that. What could possibly enter that could survive the truth? Linda, it goes back to oneness. If everything is one, then you cannot, you can't be taken over because everything's flowing through you. You're a permeable being. Water and energy flows right through you because you're not attached. You're not putting up walls and compartments against stuff. Yes, so light just comes through. Um, but until you're at that state or until you're able to be that, then yeah, it could be more difficult. Yes. Evil is just one more story that keeps us from opening to love. Yeah. Truth is the power that sets us free. And what I know is that God is everything and God is good. Right? So light includes dark. Yeah. Uh, God is everything and God is good. Source is love. Love is everything. Source is love. So she's saying that the evil comes when we fall asleep. When we're confused. I can go anywhere because everything is a metaphor to me. It's all internal. External is my internal. And there's no way I couldn't live a fearless life anymore. But you can't make light go away. So if, it, if something is absent, it's because it's gone. In, it's a mind trip. It is. It's a paradox. Paradoxical thinking. I'm rooted in reality. I love it and I can't project anything but love. None of the stories are valid. I listen with an open mind. And because I can't believe what they believe, I continue to make arrangements to meet my new friend on the other side of the wall. So she's talking about um, going to a war-torn area and her friend's cautioning her against it so she goes to the wall and it's a checkpoint i enter gaza and the sewers are running in the streets there are 20 or 30 people living in a two-room apartment good lord some of the buildings have holes in them and it's all good barefoot children come out to greet me with big smiles i'm welcome into homes i have meals in the street i talk to people as my friend translates we do the work one man says he has seven bullet holes in his body and says he was shot for throwing rocks at Israeli soldiers. When he talks politics, he seethes with confusion and despair. He still believes that throwing rocks is the way to bring about change and bullets haven't convinced him otherwise. That's the power of believing our insane thoughts. I'm free to walk anywhere in the world with anyone at any time. I can't project danger there are no limitations to where i go i love going because i love what i travel with she loves what she travels with what is she traveling with she's traveling with reality and her awareness that even if she dies it's still okay and so i mean it's people like that that she's not projecting any sense of fear so there's nothing in reality that needs to reflect that fear back to her, right? So if what we're thinking gets reflected back to us and she's thinking open and welcoming, she's going to get reflected back open and welcoming. She's not denying the violence and the darkness in herself. So the darkness in herself doesn't need to be projected outward to be reflected back. 
Are you following? Like, she doesn't have a shadow to work with because she hasn't rejected any parts of herself anymore. When you don't have a shadow and you don't have an ego that you're interested in defending anymore, it's we've just had a taste of it, right? We've just had a taste lately of what this feels like. And she's living it. The world reflects what you project. If you disown um, anger in yourself, you tend to attract a lot of angry people that are reflecting that back to you. If you're um, projecting a lot of fear or disowning fear in yourself, you tend to attract fearful situations that trigger fear. And the more you seek love, yeah. So that's why we can use other people. If they aggravate us, we can use them as information being mirrored back to us that lets us know where our blind spots are. If it's a blind spot, by definition, you're not going to see it <laughs> till it's reflected back, back to you from someone else. Go ahead, Roseanne. I pr I'm sure I have a few more minutes. It depends. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it just makes you feel worse. It always comes back to how is this me? Yeah, always bring it back home. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that reality. Yeah. So as your outward reality gets quieter, yeah, and your relationships calm down, that lets you know that what you're doing is working. It's working. Things are getting quieter. People are getting more peaceful. Um, things that need to come out and be spoken come out and are spoken. If there's secrets in your relationships, they tend to come out to the surface. People will blurt things out, not even realizing that it's happening. Because you're ready to hear it. Sanity doesn't suffer ever. A clear mind is beautiful and sees only its own reflection. Your child starts opening up to you. Your husband or your partner or your wife or whatever starts opening their heart to you because you've made it safe. You've created safety in yourself. So you've created a container around you where people can feel comfortable. A lover of reality looks forward to everything. Life, death, disease, loss, earthquakes, anything the mind might be tempted to call bad. There's that label thing. Life will bring us everything we need to show us what we haven't undone yet. Nothing outside of ourselves can make us suffer except for our unquestioned thoughts. Every place is paradise, even Ikea. <laughs> Ikea is not my idea of paradise. It's big and it's loud and it's shiny and usually there's a lot of people in there. <laughs> so I'll get to practice being a permeable um, person too that lets all the light and the shiny and the noise go right through. Oh, you've never been there? Ah, oh, it's a fascinating wonderland of storage things. Yeah, it's not my favorite place either, Nina. I just need some ideas for a closet. And then Morgan needs a lot of containers. And um, there's tons of storage solutions, Catherine, and cheap. It's pretty cheap. But it's really big. No. No, I don't, because I don't want to get... Um, no, I don't because I don't want to feel like if I don't have a crystal, then I'm not okay. I want to feel okay with just my own self. And I can easily get attached to things. That's a tendency. And that's just my personal preference. That doesn't mean that I don't think they work. I think they're great. <laughs> just walk out. Um. So I can get superstitious about stuff. So if I feel like I need to have a tool with me to get through a situation, then I'll 
then if I don't have that tool with me, I feel like I can't do it. Yeah, we're going to go in, get our stuff, and go back out. Like, we're not going to hang out. There's a restaurant in there. There's a, you know, there's probably a place where you could take a nap. Actually, if I could take a nap about halfway through, I'd have a better experience. <laughs> so, there you have it. If you can work with crystals, and I love naps too, they're my favorite. If you can work with crystals and even malas and stuff and recognize that on a day that comes that you don't have it with you, you can still do the same thing. I think it's perfectly fine. Why not? They're pretty and they're fun. Rituals are fun. Just know that you still have those capabilities with or without them. With or without the ritual, with or without the tool, you still have that capability because it's coming from inside you anyway. So, I'll be glad when 10 o'clock gets here and those doors open because I need to go to the bathroom. That's what you were telling your daughter? Yeah. Yeah, so they're fun. She's excited about her crystal. Yeah, crystals and stones and the, their properties are an awful lot of fun. Oh, hey, Max. That's so cute. And what what a beautiful thing that she's learning that stuff at this at this young age at 14. She's learning that stuff. Bye, Nina. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Crystals and stuff can be nice, tangible things for reminders. Have a great day at work. Oh, yeah, they're, they're fun. They're fun. And, and in the practice, thank you, I'm going to scope I'm gonna scope our tattoos later. I actually don't know what time our appointment is. <laughs> Sometime after lunch, I think. No. Not at all. Not at all. I, I have like, uh, how many tattoos do I have? One, two, three. I have four. So I've got nervous. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. 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 I'm just, uh, we're hitting Ikea first. Then we're going to get something to eat. Um, it is Morgan's design. It's a pink flamingo with some 1950s like kitschy stuff with it. Yeah, we're doing Ikea first. <laughs> okay. I gotta go, guys. She's calling me. I love you. I'll be on later uh, from the tattoo place. I'll see you later today. Love you. Sorry to cut you off so short. Whoops. I feel bad. I feel like I'm, like, cutting you off in mid-conversation. <laughs> I will. I'll be back later, though. I love you very much.